Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, I had a voice for radio, so today, it's time to drop all that positivity malarkey. It is that one time every couple of months where we look at bad Pokemon cards, or as I like to put it, Pointless Pokemon card. Sun and Moon 7, Charisma of the Wrecked Sky in Japan, has been leaking. It's leaked. And we've looked at every card, almost every card. There are three cards left. They're all bad. So may I present to you, lovely ladies and gentlemen, the Pointless Pokemon cards from Sun and Moon 7. And we're going to start off with Tropius. Now, Tropius is a grass Pokemon, so you're kind of hitting weakness against Lycan Rock, which does see a lot of play at the moment. And you've got a weakness to fire, which really isn't that relevant because ho is the best fire Pokemon, and he'll destroy you. You've even got a retreat cost of one, which means post-rotation you can use a skateboard. So what's so bad about Tropius? Other than the 110 HP, which is not ideal, we'd much rather have 130 so we can take a hit from Zoroark. But what's really bad about Tropius here is he attacks. One grass energy, search your deck for two Pokemon, reveal them and put them into your hand. Now, as it goes, that's a really nice, useful attack. Search for any two Pokemon. Maybe you go and get yourself some more basics. Or maybe you go and get yourself some evolution. So if you've got Zorua on the bench, you go search for a couple of Zoroark. You can start trading next turn. Maybe you search for a Tapu Lele. So that you've got a supporter for next turn. Sounds good to me, except Alolan Vulpix already does this. But with two huge differences. Difference number one, Alolan Vulpix is a water Pokemon, so it can use Brooklet Hill to search it out. That's quite nice. And difference number two, it's for zero energy. Now, don't get me wrong, zero energy is amazing. But then again, the bigger issue here is that you can, say, use a Bridget to search out this or a Brooklet Hill. And then if you've got something in the active, you can attach an energy, pay the retreat cost, and then put Alolan Vulpix up. Then you can go and search for those Pokemon without needing a second energy. Tropius here needs that second energy. So you've got to get one out of the active, then you've got to have an energy for Tropius. That's just annoying. This is why Deante from Burning Shadows was never any good. I was saying this for a long time. People did use Deante in Gardevoir decks. It's completely gone away. And the reason is, you need an energy to retreat what's in the active when you start. Then you need an energy for Deante. It's too annoying. And Deante just gets a straight evolution. That's really good. So, Tropius, yeah, you are literally just a rubbish version of a Lolan Volpix. There is a second attack here. Grass, double colorless, 70 damage. I suppose if we're being kind, we can say that with a choice ban, this will get a one hit KO on a Lycan Rock. But come on, free energy, 70 damage? No. If that's the best thing this has got going for it, leave it in your binder. At least it's a common. That is the nicest thing we can say about it. Aura Choreo. Now, weirdly enough, I said this uh, in a recent video. When Guardians Rising came around, we had a whole bunch of Aura Choreos, and the Pom Pom Aura Choreo was just bad. Like, really, really, really bad. But then in Sun and Moon 7, the Pom Pom Aura Choreo is actually really good. 30 damage to each EX and GX on the field. Starting to get a little bit of love. Well, the Bailey style Oracorio in Guardians Rising was alright. Searched out fire Pokemon, put them on your bench. Hadn't seen a huge amount of play because we haven't really wanted that many fire Pokemon out. And honestly, when we're playing decks like Ho-Oh, we'd much rather just use Kiawe as a turn-ending thing. We'd rather have the four energy than the three Pokemon. But that doesn't mean it was bad, it just means we've got better options. Well, the Bailey Oracorio in Sun and Moon 7 is bad. Now, Retreat Cost of 1 is good for a skateboard. Weakness to Lightning is good because really there's not many good Lightning things around at the moment. Resistance to Fighting with Buzzwall running around is great. So what's so bad about this? Well, again, it's the attacks. One Fire Energy. Bring one of your opponent's bench Pokemon into the active. The new Pokemon is now Burned and Confused. Well, Burn's quite nice. They take two damage counters between turns. 
And Confusion's quite nice. They have to flip a coin to attack if Tails they do 30 to themselves and the attack fails. But that's it. And this is your whole attack. And remember what I just said about fire decks being able to use Kiawe on turn 1 to get a whole bunch of energy on the field. Or the other Bailey or Akorio to get a whole bunch of basics. Or Baby Volcanian, hey Nick, to get some energy onto the field. And then you're left with this, which can bring something in the active with burn and confusion. And the thing is that nowadays everybody's playing Guzma. And when the rotation hits and Floatstone goes away, everybody's going to be playing a skateboard. Which means that they are going to be able to retreat very, very easily. So you're rarely going to get this to stick. I mean, essentially, this is... Think about it as you get to do 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon on the field for one fire energy. Would you use that if that was what it did? If that was what it actually said, would you go, oh, that's amazing, let's do this? I mean, I suppose there are going to probably be games where your opponent's not going to be able to get out the active. And you are going to be able to stick them with both Burn and Confusion. And then they're going to flip Tails on Confusion. Maybe in those circumstances it could actually work. But I remain unconvinced, ladies and gentlemen. I just don't think this is a particularly useful attack. Now there is a second attack here, but don't get excited. Fire Double Colorless, 70 damage. That's right. It's the same attack as Tropius. Now, the good news is that with Choice Band and Weakness, you will get a one-hit KO on Duskmane Necrozma. But you won't get Golisopod. You won't get Decidueye. You won't get Metagross. There are a lot of Pokemon you won't actually be able to get a one-hit KO on here. It's just unexciting. It's so uninspiring. And the biggest insult I can give this is... It's worse than Charizard GX. At least Charizard GX is free colorless. And the last Pokemon we're going to look at and call completely pointless is Pelipper. Pelipper is one of these Pokemon that confuses me. They come around every so often. And the card designers have got to look at these cards and be like, Oh, yeah, no one's ever going to play that. There were a bunch of, well, like Keldeo, etc., a little while ago, that had a justified attack that did extra damage to a Darkness Pokemon. But they weren't hitting for weakness. It wasn't like they did a huge amount of damage. I mean, they were promos, and this Keldeo, the justified one. I mean, essentially, you do 150 to Darkness Pokemon. It doesn't do anything. It's beautiful, but it's rubbish. We look at Pelipper here. And we've got a resistance to fighting, which is nice because of Buzzwall, etc. But the retreat cost of two is super awkward. 120 HP leaves it just in Zoroark's range. And then one colorless energy, 30 damage, discard a fire energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Not an energy, a fire energy. Well, that's over the top specific. What if they don't have a fire energy attached? And they often won't. It's just weird. Now, the good news is that against something like a counter energy if your opponent is behind on prizes or a rainbow energy, this will discard it because it counts as every type of energy at once. So you would be able to discard it using this. And the good news is that against Ho-Oh, this is actually going to be quite good. Because Ho-Oh needs a lot of energy, and Ho-Oh relies on stuff like Kiawe to get that energy on. But if I'm sounding positive now, please don't be confused. This attack is garbage. Over the top, unplayable, pointless garbage. Second attack here, free colorless energy, 80 damage, plus sleep. I mean, you're not even hitting for weakness. And if you were hitting for weakness, this wouldn't be a particularly good attack, but at least you could maybe get some one-hit KOs going. As it is, you're going to put them to sleep, but remember what I said about a skateboard being everywhere post-rotation. And you're not going to get any KOs from this. It's just going to make you sad. Pelipper may be the worst card in the set, I am not a fan of Pelipper. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the pointless Pokemon cards from Charisma of the Wrecked Sky from Sun and Moon 7. Because really, when it comes out over here, it's going to be this set.
combined with Champion Road. But I want to hear from you guys. Are there any other cards in the set that you think are truly bad? Are there any of the ones I've said are bad that you can find a use for? Go nuts! Be nice. And do remember, I've now analysed every card in this set. So whichever one you want to look at, I've got your back. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all of that malarkey, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do just that. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.